welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Mild drama in the House of Representatives as opposition lawmakers walk out of plenary over Speaker's refusal to declare seat of defector member vacant. Senate false 2018 budget proposal as lawmakers accuse executive of inconsistencies, inaccuracies and padding. We begin our review of this 2017 with focus on major political activities that shaped the year. And Saudi Arabia-led rebels in Yemen intercept ballistic missile targeting residential areas in the capital city of Riyadh. A quick reminder now that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. And log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app and then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Now we have some of those pictures that were sent into our portal and let's begin with this set of images from Mina, the Niger state capital, showing people whom, according to our eyewitness reporter, are protesting against poor power supply in the state. Our eyewitness reporter alleges that residents enjoy power for only two hours a day and they want the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company to do more. And next is this image from Airport Road in Abuja, the federal capital city, showing a filling station up in flames and people watching helplessly. Our eyewitness reporter did not state what the cause is, but reports that there were no casualties. From Nasarawa comes this next image showing a van allegedly belonging to the Federal Road Safety Corps overloaded with seats. Our witness reporter wants such practices discouraged. The next image is from Sunrise Estate in Inugu, Inugu State, showing this flooded road, which our eyewitness reporter says is due to the road being abandoned. And he complains about the hardship that this is call it causing and is calling for help. Let's end back here in Lagos from Maria Road in Amuwa Dauphin area of the state, showing this set of pictures showing the poor state of the road. Our eyewitness reporter is concerned about the state of this road and is calling for the government's quick intervention. Thanks a lot for all your pictures and do keep them coming. Now let's get another perspective on our lead story on the 2018 budget and we're now being joined on the news at 10 by the Director General of the Budget Office, Ben Akabweze. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you, my pleasure. Now this budget is already raising dust so early in its life. First of all, I'm going to ask you how you react to the allegations of inconsistencies and padding and the inaccuracies that the Senate have discovered? Well, I mean, uh, I just uh, heard about that from the media today. We have absolutely no details about the, what has been characterized as inconsistencies and uh, whatever else. But uh, as for padding, first of all, padding isn't isn't a standard terminology when it comes to budgeting. And padding is something that crept into our, um, you know, budget, Nigerian budget lexicon only about two years ago. But padding we understand as meaning unauthorized insertions into the budget. If you recall, two years ago there were allegations that there were unauthorized insertions into the budget proposal at the level of the budget office and then at the level of the national you know, uh, assembly. Uh, at the level of the budget office, those who were found, found culpable were disciplined and, and certain changes were made. We have since then ensured that uh, you know, ministries, departments and agencies do not submit their budgets in hard copy to the budget office. We designed a system where they input, they upload their budgets directly onto the budget you know, uh, application 
of the, of the federal government and, and there's an audit trail for every entry that is made and the budget office doesn't take responsibility to for, you know, make those uh, inputs. So the question of anybody in the budget office making any unauthorized insertions no longer arises. So I really am at a loss to understand what um, you know, the lawmakers may have characterized as padding, but we, right, we, but you know, we look forward to receiving those details. Neither do we know anything about what have been termed inconsistencies. Well, it'll be, a, it'll be, it will be a good else. idea to, I was just saying, it will be a good idea when you receive it to take a look at it, because that was one of the issues that did come up during the 2016 presentation, um, etc. But let me just turn your attention to something else um, quickly now concerning implementation of the 2017 budget. Uh, beyond the budget being passed, we have this particular, um, that 2017 budget being criticized for poor implementation and etc. Is there anything that you see that we can do that raises red flags in this particular one that you've um, put together quickly now? Well, first of all, for the 2017 budget, as we all know, the budget wasn't passed into law until June 2017. And we need to understand that there are different components of the budget. There is the recurrent component of the budget, which in our own case amounts to 70% you know, of the budget. This aspect of the budget, which includes payment of salaries, you know, servicing debt, you know, running government, the expenses here have been running on schedule. So when people, you know, talk about 18 percent, you know, performance of the budget, clearly they cannot be talking about the entire, you know, the overall budget. We're talking now about the capital budget. The capital budget, you could not start, you know, implementing until after the approval. If we have a delay, as we had in approving the budget until June, then after that there are processes when it comes to capital expenditure. There are procurement procedures. Those items that need to be, you know, uh, uh, you know advertised, it takes a minimum of six weeks you know, before all of that happens. Right. And if therefore implementation of the capital budget only started in July, and by the end of October, we have spent 450, uh, you know, billion, and you know, this month, the commitment to release another 750 billion naira on the budget. Clearly, the implementation could be, you know, better. And but it was always clear, given that, you know, the budget was approved only in uh, June, right. that we couldn't achieve a 100% implementation of the capital component of the budget within the limited time. And that's why we designed the 2018 budget with a view to rolling over at least 50% of the, you know, the, the, the items included in the 2017 budget. These items have been included in the 2018 budget proposals before the National Assembly. And the expectation is that if we then have a budget approved by January and we have a full year's implementation, oh. we will put paid to this specter of, you know, uh, you know poor implementation of, of, of budgets. So right. It's closely related also to... Uh, you know, delayed approval of the budget. All right. There were also issues to do with that rollover, which we cannot discuss now. I'm going to thank you, the Director General of the Budget Office, Ben Akwebuze, for sharing our thoughts on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you. Drama, disagreements and controversies are some of the issues that define the political landscape in the last 12 months. What a year 2017 has been. And tonight we begin our review of the year in different sectors, starting off with politics. Our political correspondent, Shion Okimbaloye, in this report, takes a look at the key issues that made headlines in politics in 2017. How do you review perhaps one of Nigeria's most eventful years in politics? A best place perhaps to start is aboard the presidential aircraft, the Eagle One, and the travels of the president, Muhammad Buhari, especially the trips to London on medical vacation. Early January, precisely on the 19th day, the president traveled to London for treatment, details of which is not disclosed. 
with extension to his stay in London. He returned after some weeks and went back. The president spent over 100 days with a series of visits from officials from Nigeria. At some point on his return, he made a very touching revelation about his health. I couldn't recall ever being so sick. The nation was also fortunate to have not the proverbial spare tire. While the president was away, so many political activities raged. The vice president making peace moves in the Niger Delta region, but between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government, the war was intense. We are not going to go into the for the confirmation of anybody. Acting chairman of the EFCC was refused confirmation. The custom boss was asked to appear in uniform. Those against the day, there is an Even the budget 2017 was caught in a crossfire. You took my laptop. I, in the case is over. As that went on, the president of the Senate was forced to a regular visit to the Code of Conduct Tribunal to answer questions on issues relating to asset declaration. But fingers were also pointed at an executive in some corruption issues. The secretary to government of the federation and a grass cutting controversy made headlines for weeks. But in actual sense, it is 530 million naira was used to clear grasses. But when the kitchen heat was unbearable, Mr. Babachelawa was sent parking. The main opposition party, People's Democratic Party, had seen a lot of legal tussle with troubles reaching a climax when the Supreme Court sacked Senator Limadou Sharif and empowered Senator Herman Makarafi led caretaker committee. That was a landmark decision for the party. The party went into a national convention where Prince Uche Secundas emerged as a chairman. The party gave the ruling APC a stern warning. By this, we serve them quick notice. The APC hasn't had a particularly good running of its own internal affairs, having managed just a neck meeting in over a year and still no national convention in over two years, as stipulated by its own constitution. Nigerians who want opposition, I don't think the PDP as it is today has met that need. APC LG primaries in Lagos left a rather unpleasant scenario. <laughs> Mr. Willie Obiano emerged governor of Anambra State in a landslide victory, defeating his opponents in all local government areas. Several defections happened across political parties. The most prominent is a former vice president, Atiku Abubakar. I have returned home. This is the home. Mr. Abrashid may now return to the civil service in the most dramatic manner. Agitations by IPOB and some other groups will arrive, and the call for restructuring reached a fever pitch. How do we review year 2017 without mentioning some of the most dramatic moments that kept us laughing all the way with some of our lawmakers' class acts? Reporting for channels, television news. What a year indeed. And when the news at 10 returns, more on politics in 2017. I'll be joined by an associate professor of political science, Dr. Kayode Isuola. And Dangote Refinery plans to deliver the world's largest single refinery in 2019. That's all coming up after the break. Good job, Sigan.